بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household and all his companions May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless every single one of us My brothers and sisters if I were to inform you that a very wealthy person has passed on and your name happens to be in their will where all you have to do is go and collect, I'm sure many people would be excited, especially in these trying times where the economy, perhaps not many people are living as they used to before. I'm sure we would be so excited and we would rush and make every effort to ensure that we would get we would get what is written for us by someone who has already left and if anyone tried to hinder us or hinder us reaching that particular estate or what belongs to us we perhaps would take them to task my brothers and sisters the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam being a messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us has left for us a fortune. What is that? It is narrated in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ لَمْ يُوَرِّثُوا دِرْهَمًا وَلَا دِينَارًا وَإِنَّمَا وَرَّثُوا الْعِلْمًا وَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ The prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have not left behind gold or silver, the dirham or the dinar, but they have left something more valuable than that, and that is knowledge. Whoever takes from it will indeed receive a huge portion. It is such that it does not get depleted. It never finishes. But it is up to us to make an effort to learn, to make an effort to study, to make an effort to read the seerah, the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to go out to understand revelation. There are so many examples that we could give of how we have become oblivious of what is more important and we give importance to that which in actual fact is of less importance. Let me give you one or two examples. Most of us here probably know how to drive a motor vehicle and we've got our driver's license. Those who don't, I'm sure we aspire one day, inshallah, to get a driver's license. What has happened? We went through a test. We had a book known as the highway code in this country and we went through it and we had to study it because we knew there is an examination, the questions are going to come from this book. To be honest, we studied it, we learned it. When we passed, we were excited, we were happy. Then we went for the road test. Road test, we made sure whatever we learned in that book and whatever we wrote in the exam, we now applied it. If we did not apply it correctly, we were failed. Then what did we do? Some of us repeated. And thereafter, we got it again and again. Or whenever it was that we got it finally, it was because we followed the rules. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand that my brothers and sisters, revelation that has been left for us, it is of utmost importance to know. It is much more important than the highway code. We need to know it. We will have examinations and it's not enough to know the answer, but to apply it practically. This is why in Islam, there is something known as ilm and something known as amal. Although you find the same letters in both words, ayn, lam, meem or ayn, meem and lam, they are connected in the sense that when you have one, you must prove it by involving in the other. If I have ilm and I have knowledge, there is no point in that knowledge when I do not practice upon it or disseminate it. Many of us have now grown old. Perhaps we have children who'd like to learn how to drive. They will watch you and you will give them a tip or two every now and again. My son, this is what it is. You must be careful. Perhaps sometimes there is a, you know, a, a, the stop might not be for you, but be careful, slow down, even if it is a green traffic light and so on. Why don't we do this when it comes to the deen, which is more important? Advise your children. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu qu anfusakum. قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا. Oh, you who believe, save yourselves and your family members from the fire. 
something dangerous, much more dangerous. In the same way we give them tips because we don't want accidents or them to be harmed by means of being injured and so on. We, would, we must be even more interested in saving them from the fire of Jahannam, which is far more severe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So my brothers and sisters, an effort is required. Without making an effort, we will not be able to learn. To be honest, I was speaking to a few of the brothers, asking them casually how much they learn about the deen. And they, some of them actually said that the last time we learned meaningful learning was when we were much younger. Subhanallah. Okay? That means every month you have nothing that you've learned new. Every week you have nothing you've learned new. Yet, even if you started off by coming early for the Jumu'ah or for the Friday sermon and listening attentively, perhaps you would go away with some knowledge. That's a starting point. It's definitely not enough. But to show an interest in your maker and what he has made obligatory upon you is something that is incumbent upon every one of us. We must, we must show this interest. By the, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, further doors will be opened, one after the other. So for us to come early on a Friday, listen to the talk, we will be encouraged perhaps to attend in the evening when there is a tafsir. What is the tafsir? We are explaining the highway code that will take you straight through the highway into paradise. That's what it is. It's a highway code. It is showing you the path, how to drive, how to move from point A to point B in a way that you don't bump this one, you don't damage your vehicle that way, you don't cause obstruction on the road, you don't stop where you're not supposed to stop and so on. Where there is a red traffic light, you stop. Where it's green, you go and so on. This is something important that will drive you straight to paradise. Why is it that we give more preference to that? which is only for the dunya. I'm not saying it's wrong to learn how to drive and be a professional, but we are drawing an example to say, my brothers and sisters, it's about time we made the effort. Come on, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, that's not much. It will drive us to paradise. But if we don't make this effort, perhaps we will die without knowing why we were created in the first place. Because many people think that now I'm in this world, I can do as much as I want, enjoy my life, you know, you only live once as they say YOLO and carry on and do as you wish. When you've enjoyed everything, you die. People say, wow, this man really enjoyed. He had a good life, but he doesn't realize or they don't realize what happens from there. What happens from that point? That is the real beginning. This was only a period of time that Allah blessed you and I with in order to prepare the palace of the Akhirah. Yesterday, we lost a brother of ours. I'm sure a lot of us would have known him quite well. May Allah grant him Jannah and grant sabr to his family. And may Allah grant Jannah to all the marhumin, all those who passed away. A lesson we can take from that is we all have to go. There is a time, a fixed time that Allah has already chosen. And he has declared, <laughs> When the prescribed time of Allah, the fixed time comes, it will not be delayed. So don't fool yourself. Let me not fool myself either. We have to prepare for the day we are going to meet with Allah. By doing what? Learn the book. Find out what to do. Find out what it's all about. Learn the Quran, the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Learn more regarding the deen. That's not enough. Put it into practice. Ensure that you have worked towards it. Do not let the devil distract you. Never, not at all. Do not let shaitan make you think for a moment that I am in this world in order to enjoy as I please. No. You may enjoy, but within the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody is saying divorce yourself from all enjoyment. No, but enjoy yourself for as long as you do not trample upon the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, it is important for us to pass the message on at least to our children. How would we be able to pass the message on to our children when we have not known what the message is all about ourselves? And this is why Muhammad وسلم, has encouraged us so much, so much. You know, he speaks of those with knowledge. And he says, those with knowledge. Those with knowledge are similar to the stars. They are used as guiding stars in the darkness in, on, on land and at sea. And this is something important. So we need to seek the guidance. 
be in the company of the knowledgeable, learn a thing or two. Perhaps when they have their lessons, take part. Don't be from amongst those who doesn't even know when the lessons are happening in the masjid. When, for example, or how best we can enroll our children to learn something. Today we heard a beautiful recitation. One of the young boys. It is the effort of the parents as well as the ulama that has made this possible by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they showed no interest, what would have happened? We would not have really achieved so much. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us achieve Jannah and may He make it easy for us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has actually expanded on this issue of knowledge. So much so that he speaks of the people with knowledge being higher than all the others, even if some who did not have knowledge might have had more acts of worship. And this is why it's explained in a long hadith, إِنَّ فَقِيهًا وَاحِدًا أَشَدُّ عَلَى الشَّيْطَانِ مِنْ أَلْفِ عَابِدٍ You can have a thousand worshippers of Allah, but one person who has a deep understanding of the deen is higher in rank than those thousand put together. And the reason explained is quite clear. The one person who has a deep understanding will be able to convey the message to the others. He will be able to save a whole lot. Whereas those who don't really have much knowledge, but they themselves are fulfilling their salah and perhaps engaged in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they may not be able to do that much. The devil might come to them from places that they won't even know. And this is explained in the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says quite clearly in the Quran, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Ask them, say, are they equal, those who know and those who don't know? إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُنُوا الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, those who take heed are those with intellect. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the intellect. They are not equal. Why are they not equal? Because... When you have made an effort to learn the deen, you have made an effort to study, and you have made an effort to put it into practice, you are definitely on a higher level. And now you are teaching it to others, so much so that Muhammad tells us that whoever teaches someone else any goodness will achieve a full reward of whatever they have taught. And whenever it is practiced by the others, and will continue receiving a full reward even if those or when the others keep teaching the next generation and so on up to the day of Qiyamah. This is why my brothers and sisters, if I can pause for a moment, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the highest in rank, the best of creation. Do you know that as we are speaking and as we read Quran and whatever goodness we do, as we fulfill salah, Every droplet of reward that every single one of us is getting or has got in the past or will get in the future is going to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is receiving all that reward because he was the one chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spread the message of goodness in the first place. So if I were to read the Quran, say I, was to, I were to say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You and I know that for every letter that I read for the sake of Allah, I would achieve or receive 10 rewards. Imagine in that verse, there are so many rewards, perhaps 200 rewards or maybe even more. What would happen? Everyone in the chain of those who have taught one another, going all the way back to Muhammad ﷺ, in a split moment has registered reward similar to that of the reciter of the Qur'an. Now to put you into the picture, imagine how many people are reciting the Qur'an at any given time on the globe. So imagine if, this, if we had electric cables or wires or you know, optics or wireless, whatever it was, to register the reward and it had to go through wires, I think we would burn them all up immediately. It would be jammed completely because at any given time people are reading Fajr or Dhuhr or Asr or Maghrib or Isha or Quran or, or some good or people are teaching one another. Where did they get it from? Someone who got it from someone in the chain of narrators all the way back to Muhammad wasallam. Surely we need to join that somewhere. I need to be in it somehow. Surely you need to be in that equation somehow. So that one day when I'm gone and you are gone, the reward continues for in my account, so is yours. Subhanallah. This is why the hadith speaks of When the son of Adam, when the child of Adam, meaning human being, passes away, his deeds are cut off, his books are sealed, except from three things. 
One of them is a child who makes dua. Someone who makes dua or who prays, supplicates for them, the reward of that would go to them. Number two is knowledge that they have disseminated. Whenever it is practiced upon or taught to others, the full reward goes back, all the way back, completely. And it continues to add on to their account. And the third thing known as sadaqatun jariyah, a charitable deed that they have given or a charity they have given a charitable deed they have engaged in which continues so for example someone drilled a borehole someone for example might have planted a tree someone has educated certain people or assisted contributed in some way someone has built a masjid or a madrasa or contributed towards it it is known as a sadaqatun jariyah which means a charity that the benefit of it continues generations down even after we are gone so the reward will continue until that item is made use of or until the time that that particular item uh, finishes or comes to an end may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us the reason i have chosen this or to speak about this today is to encourage yourselves and myself to learn more to make an effort we know so much about the tax rules that were spoken about yesterday just yesterday there was an announcement regarding the duties and so on i'm sure a lot of us including myself already know what was going on and we know that mobile phones are going to increase in price and we know that the price of food is going to go up and we know that five percent was added here and there why because it is of our interest we are living in the country we know it's the economy it affects our pockets what about something that affects your whole akhirah? It affects your whole life after death. It affects eternity. Come on. We could do a little bit better, inshallah. Learn the Quran. Study it. Attend these halaqat and these gatherings of knowledge. Encourage the ulama you know to say, please, can we start a lesson once a week or so on? Or if there are lessons, attend them. Make an effort after Maghrib, after Isha, once, twice a week. Come on, it's good enough. Send our children to the madaris, you know, the, the schools to learn the deen. Sometimes we give preference to the schools that teach secular education such that in the afternoon, the child says, you know what? I've gotten a hair ache. I don't even know what that is. My hair is aching. And we say, don't worry, you don't need to go to the madrasa. What is that? He's brought up something totally useless. He's created something and we are okay with that. You don't need to go. Or it's okay, I'm late. I'm on my phone. I'll drop you off at about three o'clock. And you know, it kicks off at 2.30. Show an interest. If you drop off your child at 20 past two, when the madrasa starts at two, half past two, for example, the child is already receiving a message that this means a lot to my folks. This is something of prime importance. Show them an interest. Say, look, we're not going to go on holiday. When you have a break there, then we will tailor make the holiday accordingly. But to us, that is by the way. Believe me, we can trample all over the madrasa and all the ulama and we can tell them what to do. But if a businessman comes to us, then we say, yes, my boss, you tell me how to operate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It's a reality. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. I hope these few words have just served as an encouragement, inshallah, firstly to myself and then to everyone else. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabina Muhammad.